Well, nice to be with you, Roy, uh, again. Uh, I'm not surprised that Mr. Netanyahu still insists on doing this. There are a number of old, uh, domestic Israeli pol political reasons for him uh, to show that he is uh, uh, dealing with this in a strong way. But unfortunately, uh, the entire uh, narrative uh, is misleading in many ways. I mean, let's remember that what happened to, to ignite this, it was the uh, forceful removal of people uh, in one of the immediate neighborhoods uh, uh, of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, it's also uh, something that was widespread within Israel, which is unprecedented that many of the Arabs uh, uh, within the Israeli territories uh, have also joined in many cities. Then, unfortunately, uh, uh, Israel was able to focus attention on the attacks from Gaza and turn the narrative from uh, an internal revolt by the Arab population into a confrontation with Hamas. Uh, what I expect to happen is that always happens. Uh, after killing hundreds of, his, uh, of Palestinians in Gaza, I mean, your numbers just showed that oh, close to 200 Palestinians have died so far, while 10 people died in Israel. That shows you the balance of power here, uh, is that the international community or uh, the United States will convince Israel to stop, at, but only after it achieves its uh, objectives. And we return back to the same old problem of trying to ignore this uh, situation which will uh, make it explode again and again. Uh, given what we've heard from the UN Security Council, what power does it have to press Israel and, and even more so uh, to press Hamas, which is not a state actor, not a party uh, to the UN? Nothing. Um, the, the UN has issued close to a hundred resolutions uh, uh, in trying to influence Israel, in trying to return back to the basis of international law where uh, Israel must return to the territories between uh, before 67 uh, to stop it from all kinds of acts. But Israel has always defied that and never accepted any of these resolutions. And as long as the United States is willing to protect Israel with its veto power, uh, there is really nothing else to happen except international condemnation and uh, uh, sort of an increasing bad image and brand for Israel globally, including what about any, countries. What about the leverage on Hamas? Does it have any? Are there any international pressure? There is, but uh, uh, Hamas is now in, in a territory that has been on lockdown. I mean. Uh, the Palestinian in Gaza, where Hamas is, uh, have very little services, no electricity, no water, uh, no even food convoys. They are not even receiving vaccinations, nothing. Therefore, uh, and they're not receiving money from the outside. They are totally isolated except and completely dependent on the Israeli, what Israel allows in and out. So I'm not sure anybody has any power uh, on, on Hamas because they're not dependent on anybody anymore. Does Hamas emerge from all of this emboldened or weakened? Yes, I think emboldened. I think it uh, also judging uh, by the sympathies across the region and the world. Uh, the mistake uh, by the Israeli uh, authorities was to try to do something on Al-Aqsa Mosque which turned this conflict to something beyond Palestinian issue. Uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque is not only important to Palestinians and Arabs, but it is important to Muslims <clears throat> around the world. And uh, it focused attention of the entire Islamic world on what's happening. It's not just simply another round of conflicts with Hamas.